Hello everyone, welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin and today we're going to be diving into all of the traits in which are so beautiful, rich, and unique about you that we are going to celebrate and totally pep you up on today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so welcome back, my beautiful kindred spirits, and anyone new who is joining me here for the very first time, definitely feel free and consider subscribing to this kindred space if you haven't already. But today, like I mentioned, is going to be a very celebratory reading because as I'm filming this, it is actually my birthday. So I thought, why not celebrate all of you while we celebrate this day? Because I just love giving back to this community. I love just really giving you a space to empower yourself, to reclaim traits about yourself, to remind yourself of how wonderful, beautiful, smart, intelligent, exciting that you are because sometimes I think that the world tries to bring us down, tries to remind us of why we're not doing good enough or tries to peel back layers and hurt us where you know, it hurts the most. And I think that it's really important to give ourselves these community pep talks to remind ourselves of the exciting things to be proud of and to celebrate and how far we've really come. So I think that today is a perfect way to be able to celebrate on my birthday by celebrating all of you. So if you guys are excited, then definitely feel free to let me know in the comments down below as we go through these readings how this resonates for you. But before we start heading into each of your piles of feel-good pep talk readings, uh, I definitely want to just let you know of the different ways that you can support this space. Maybe you've been here for a while and you'd like to support it a little bit further, or maybe this is one of your very first readings and you'd like to as well, then definitely feel free to check out the Kindred tip jar down below. It's a great way to support this space to help me get new decks and supplies and really uplift and financially support um, myself and this space. So definitely feel free to check out that down below, but you can also check out ways in which you can support yourself as well as this space through the, um, stem oil readings that I do. They're very treasured. They're tangible readings that I sent to you in the mail. Um, they are typewritten on a vintage typewriter from the 1970s, and I even wax sealed them closed for your eyes only. They can go through a ton of different types of subjects and queries so we can really look into the types of spreads or answers that you're looking for and they're also very treasured by a lot of people in this community and you can check out all of their reviews down below um, so thank you so much for listening and seeing the ways in which you can support this space it really does make a difference and I appreciate you listening to my rambles at the beginning of these videos and we're going to go ahead and look at these piles so for each of the piles I wanted to do a little heart to remind you guys of how much I love and appreciate you all um, and how unique you are. So for each of the hearts here for pile number one, we have this piece of um, Shiva eye shell. It took me a minute to remember there, but Shiva eye shell. A um, little bit of a tongue twister, but there you are. It's a very milky shell. It's a very um, calming one and also has this beautiful spiral in it. So that is pile number one. For pile number two, we have Tiger's Eye in this little heart. Um, it's very orange and reflective. It's got these really beautiful layers to it. Reminds me a lot of like, um, like dirt or fossils or something like that, um, like the layers in the land. So that is pile number two. And lastly, but definitely not least, is pile number three with this rose quartz heart. It is in this really rosy, blushy pink kind of color and tone. It is very milky as well, but also very solid and sweet. So that is pile number three. So before you start heading to your piles, I definitely invite you to take a deep and cleansing as well as grounding meditative breath here to really connect with your intuition and these piles before you start heading on your way. So let's go ahead and take a deep and cleansing breath together here now.
And as always, there's no right or wrong way to choose your pile, especially with this one. Let's celebrate all the different traits that come through here. So you can choose one, two, all three piles. You can choose a pile, flip-flop, and change your mind. There really is no right or wrong way. Um, there's definitely piles that overlap here, so see what resonates for you. Uh, all of the timestamps will be down below in the description, as well as with the chapter marks of this video. And like I mentioned earlier, definitely feel free to check out the Kindred Tip Jar, my Instagram if you'd like to connect with me further as I connected with so many of you um, there and have such a beautiful community there. And you can also check out the snail mail readings and other different magical, exciting endeavors that I get into um, to support the space. So thank you so much for hanging out here on my birthday and really connecting with your unique and exciting traits. And we're going to go ahead and get started with pile number one. Hello group one! If you've decided to choose this piece of Shiva eye shell, then this is the pile for you. Uh, today we are going to be, as I mentioned earlier in the intro, looking into the things that we are going to be celebrating about yourself. So I think sometimes we need a little bit of a pep talk, a little bit of a like just comforting video. So we're going to be looking into the things and traits about you that are to be celebrated, that are to be honored, and the ones that you're also growing and working through still too. So these might be ones that you lost along the way and you want to reclaim. There might be other things that are brought up. We're going to see, but we're going to be using the uh, charms as well as the watercolor affirmations. We're also going to be using several different oracle decks here as well as the modern witch tarot. So if you are ready to go and have a little bit of a pep talk, chill, kind of build you up kind of vibe going on here, then definitely feel free to get settled, grab some water, tea, a nice snack, do some chores, get comfy in whatever way you'd like, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So so what are we celebrating? Which traits about you are we going to celebrate here today? So the first one that we have coming up here is the Four of Swords, a really, really good one, especially in the society we live in. This is an amazing trait to be um, coming up for you. And then on top of that, we also had the Chariot show up, which is one of my favorite cards, especially in this deck, because when I got this deck, it was one of my very first cards to get for like my yearly message. So this has such a beautiful message tied onto it, especially when in, com in combination with the Four of Swords here. But before we start talking too much on these two, I want to get your last card here to get the full scope. Okay, so we also have the star. Wow, you guys really know how to take care of yourself. That's what I'm going to say right off the bat. Like, these are the traits that, like I said, you're either currently reclaiming or working on or you're very proud of about yourself. So let's see, or that you should be proud of about yourself, right? Sometimes we forget about the beautiful things within us and we need that, like, Rein reinforcement I guess or reminding rather so getting these three cards I already know you have a very go-getter spirit or at least that you when you come across a really hard obstacle you don't wait too long to find where you want to go right you're not too too indecisive or if you feel like you are it might be a time to start reclaiming this knowing that you can just listen to your intuition and go there's a lot of go-getter attitude there's also leadership at least for yourself coming in with this specific card like sometimes we have leadership for others right we're a parent or we're a teacher or something like that a mentor but sometimes it's just reminding ourselves of like our higher self that we're constantly working up towards um, so I see that here with the chariot we have a random little moth cho showing up with us as well so if you guys have any moth guides that's showing up but uh, anyway we also got the four of swords and the star both about rejuvenation um, it also can talk with the Four of Swords. You can see here she is, or they are rather, um, sitting on this little bed, kind of lying down, taking a little bit of a rest. This is about knowing in your gut that just because you took some time to have rest doesn't mean that you're quitting or you know or that you know when to quit. You know when something is too much or over your limit. Like you have that that capacity to be able to judge that within you if you 
You're not just going to fall into peer pressure. You're not just going to follow society by its rules. You're going to follow what your heart really needs, what your body really needs in any given moment. If that means to get go-getter energy, then that means to go towards what you want. But that also can mean that you also know how to rest. You also know when to take time to rest because the star is about rejuvenation. You can see them being so like also like there's such a self-love kind of message with this too like this feeling of celebration in your body like you've come back home to your body you're starting to become more in tune with your body or at least neutral to it that you don't have to be as harsh um and also with your mind too i also see this as being a very like like i said you're very like confident in who you are and in your roots and and what makes you happy that peer pressure doesn't really have a huge effect on you anymore that you're just like if I want to wear pant like slouchy clothes to a business meeting I'm going to if I want to go to the store wearing these raggedy clothes then I'm going to I like you don't follow those social norms the clothing norms the body norms you don't have to follow those and I think you're either reclaiming that right now or you're currently reminding yourself of just how steady you are and who you are like there's some people right they have to really work up to that point and maybe that was you but then there's some people who are just like born with that like just knowing who they are and they just sit in it and they know that that's that's this is for them and that's not for them there isn't that indecisive nature in between so those are the things that I'm getting so far from these cards Oh, I I just remembered the other thing I wanted to say as well with the star is it also has a lot to do with navigation, right? Because we follow the stars for navigation. We use them to map out our lives. And so I also think that you're really good at mapping things out. You're really good at um, taking direction and um, putting pieces together. Like that even could be like in a more neuro... um, like neurodivergent kind of way I think that that's something to also celebrate because I do see this as being able to see things in a different perspective right the star shows different perspectives we all could be looking at the moon but we have a different perspective just because of the way that we're standing on the earth right so this is celebrating that you have a unique perspective in life that you have a unique way that either your body works that your mind works there's a unique part and qualities around you surrounding you that you really own or that you have the total capacity to own and they are definitely something to celebrate so I see that also coming through here so I love these traits so far these go-getter traits rejuvenation navigation knowing who you are and sticking to your guns. I love that. So let's go ahead and now look into your like superpower trait. That's what I want to call it here. Like, you know, if you could fly or if you could um, have super strength, this is like your superpower when people see you and when people interact with you or even when you interact, you know, with yourself, like this is your superpower trait. So let's see what you have coming in here. Definitely feel free to send your energy in and we're going to see what to celebrate for your sort of superpower big trait coming through. So group one here, group one, what do we have? Okay, definitely makes sense. Okay, what is next in my becoming? You got turn, which is the dragonfly. And if you guys have ever seen dragonflies in real life, you know how, like, they'll be going one way, and then the next way, and then over here, and then up here, and over there. So you can see that as sort of that um, neurodivergent kind of energy, or you can also see it as being um, just able to quickly and actively make decisions, or being able to really just follow your gut to make the turns that you need to make. Like, you're not going to sit here, like, with the chariot and sit at a spot, um, at like a stoplight not sure which way to go you're just going to intuitively make that decision you might be a more impulsive person um and even if that's not true then at least you know which direction you're going to take with some educated decision making but I do see that whatever you do take you definitely are in it but then on top of that I also think that you're flexible that you're allowing yourself to also change that sometimes there are traits in which you used to really see about yourself or you used to see the world in one way but you also allow yourself to learn new things about the world and make a new decision and make that shift and change as well because you know it is for your well-being you know it is what is best for you so already such beautiful cards to be getting I love this as your superpower the dragonfly is so so beautiful as well and such a unique insect as well like 
I just, I love this. So those are your main traits that are coming through right now that sometimes you just need a pep talk on or to remind yourself that you can reclaim these traits as well. But what I want to move into now using the seed and sickle oracle here is to look into a lesson that you're maybe going to learn and a new trait that may come out of that, that lesson. So let's look into these two cards to see what may be coming in as new traits that you're going to be either reclaiming because you maybe you learned this lesson before or you're going back through it but let's look into that situation group one group one so there's your lesson let's look at what you'll be learning okay interesting all right i love fever few so that's the one you caught over here um, as the trait that you'll be gaining from this all with 28 so there's fever few and then you also have, oh, you have strawberry, beautiful, very, very important, especially with the things that we've already talked about, but this is in the fall suit. They both are, so maybe it's something that may happen in the fall for you. Um, those who are in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe something more recently. Uh, but we have the number 39 as well as 28, so they almost feel like in succession with each other. But there you are with strawberry and fever few. So we'll start here with strawberry because it is the thing that you're going to be learning to gain this trait of fever few. So strawberry is all about, as you can see, it's, you know, kind of got its vine nature to it um, in that it kind of just is constantly making these turns and these changes. So right now you might be making a really big shift in your life, a really big change, or you're about to have to quickly make a quick decision and deviate from the the typical path that you would take, right? This is like um, that poem where it's like a path in a yellow wood, but I took the, lo the road less traveled kind of vibe. This is taking that less traveled road, but going with it anyway, because there, you get the strawberry in the end. You're going to get that fruit in the end. It's going to be worth the time and effort to go down that muddier, harder, difficult path. So I do see that coming through for you. There is going to be a lot of growth and blooming through this process as well with those strawberry blooms. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about too with this is also if you, if that isn't fully resonating, it also has another layer to this card and the idea that you may be um, gaining a lot of that wealth right now. Maybe you've gone through this path, maybe this has already happened or you currently are starting to gain more wealth or gain more resources or gain more um, emotional experience and maturity because what you get with this strawberry card is it does talk a lot about community coming together with community and sharing your wealth right so this is sharing community resources sharing your wealth sharing your time sharing your wisdom in order to help the full community as well um, which we get here with strawberry so everyone can bloom everyone can flower um, and not just keeping it all to yourself and making sure those along the way that helped you down this path get um, a little bit of love back which totally ties into this new trait that you may be getting through fever few so through this process you may be gaining a new trait to celebrate which is community care because fever few is a very fierce very um, fiercely loving kind of plant right so this one it loves to fiercely protect those who um, are in community with it. So if you have different people or different people, different plants um, that are around this plant, they are going to work together to share resources, share space, and really have community care. But the other thing is that this is also a fierce protector as well because the fever few showcases that protection through the way that it smells. All of the different bugs that try to literally bug it um, or different animals Animals that may try to eat it it has a super bitter smell and a bitter taste so it's bitterness it's boundaries basically that it puts up is going to help create space to make sure that the community and itself can be best protected so this is a gatekeeper this is a protector this is a fierce lover this is the, those are the traits that you may be gaining through this and also the idea of community care and shared wealth and resources so I love that coming through for you because like I said you're already really know who you are you stick to your guns so now that you know who you are and you stick to your guns why not share some of that wisdom share some of that wealth share some of that emotional maturity that you've gained to help and benefit your family your friends and others that are in community with you so I love that that's come through for you let's go ahead and pull you your watercolor affirmation and then we're going to also pull specific traits from 
the um, different charms here with a different casting method today. So definitely stay tuned for that. And if you are enjoying this video so far, definitely be sure to give this video a like. It really does help so much and I appreciate it. But let's go ahead and see your affirmation through all of this. Something else to celebrate at this time. There we go. Group one. What do we got here? We have turned the page. You literally had to turn and then you have turned the page. And like I said, with the strawberry, there is this feeling of changing directions, changing lanes, doing some deviating from the path. So it's time to turn the page. It's time to gain something new. Maybe you've gotten really comfortable with yourself, but in that comfort, maybe you've gotten a little bit like stuck or maybe feel bored with things. So I definitely see that you might be moving into a new perspective, a new um, like uphill battle in a good way, almost like, you know, when you work out and your muscles feel tired the next day, but you kind of feel good about it. It kind of feels like you were productive in some way. I see that with this turn the page, that feeling of like achievement because you pushed yourself, um, in a really empowering way. So there you are with turn the page and turn strawberry fever few the chariot, the four of swords, and the star, but now we're going to go ahead and pull you some charms. So I did this last week using this specific um, charm casting, but today I'm not going to actually put the different things in it with the different letters and the numbers. We're going to fully, so solely and fully focus on the charms here for your traits. So I'm first going to go ahead and pull you those charms, so feel free to send your energy in as always, and we're going to pull you some charms for some traits here, group one. Okay. So we had a few, this one fell off, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it in as well and zoom you in so you can see everything here. But here are your traits. So of course, we've got um, one that definitely has more of that turn sort of energy because we have the, um, the knight charm here. So this is, if you have ever played chess, um, this knight can move not only just forward, but it can move one and to the side or two up and to the side. So it has this feeling of turning, deviating from the path, going a different way than everyone else. There's a unique path that they take. Um, it can also showcase sidestepping something or sidestepping around that peer pressure kind of energy as well. I do see that instead of creating a bunch of conflict, I do see that you might just kind of get around it, move around it, or, um, you know, not try to take too many sides, but I do see that when there is a battle that is well worth it, you will be a fierce protector, right? You kind of just swoop in and protect those who need your protection in your community and whom you really love and care about. So that is so beautiful. That would come in with that fever view. We have creature comfort showing up here. I always see this as like a crocheted or knitted blanket, like from um, a close friend or family member. Like this feels really cozy and lovely and those creature comforts that you get from family and friends. So it also can showcase that you can be such a comfort to them and that you are like that knitted blanket. You give really warm hugs and really cozy feelings when people are around you. You make them feel really cozy and warm, um, especially when you're very close to them. I see that definitely. We also have the puzzle piece showing up here, maybe more of that neurodivergent vibe, but not necessarily. I also see this as um, personally, I always see this as more of that community feeling because it, I, when I was a kid, I always saw these as people um, growing up instead of like a full puzzle piece. So whenever I saw these little bits, it felt like people. So I see a bunch of people sitting around a table, right? Co being in community, being connected in some way, um, playing games or something like that. So seeing as we got it around a lot of game pieces, you might be someone who likes to play games, like literally like board games, or that's your way of being in community. Um, could even be video games, RPG, um, role-playing games, those sorts of things. I can see that coming through. Uh, I also see this as you being like a really good leader in a community as well because we do have the leadership charm. This also can showcase a spiritual leader or um, also can showcase like being really close and people know that your spiritual side of yourself is really important to you and they see it as something that is very important. 
there's more of that fierce protection as well because we have these sharp charms. So the people who are not co like people to be cozy with, you're very sharp, you're very quick, you might be very like witty. Um, I also see this as being right like a very fierce protector. You're not gonna like take any BS from anyone um, who is not only just harming you but also those who are very close to you, right? Because you don't take in that peer pressure or you're moving through to claim that idea of yourself not taking that peer peer pressure. I see that confidence coming through to be able to protect others as well as yourself. We also have the fall in love charm. So you might be like a hopeful romantic. I've been reclaiming the word hopeless romantic as a hopeful romantic myself um so I really like this as a fall in love charm you may just when you are really close to someone you may just really fall in love with them not necessarily always romantically but just even platonically or with those whom you are very close with you fiercely love as well and then lastly we have the trait of the um 32 little megabytes here so I see this SD card as being like very discerning so again because you don't take any bs you're really good at fact checking people seeing the receipts looking past the gossip or looking past the first layer of someone and looking farther into the surface right so this is showcasing right when you see this most of the time we have over 32 megabytes in something so this is like you're not just going to look at that first layer and you're discerning because you're not also um looking at just the very minimum amount of information to make a decision you really look at it wholeheartedly so i also see that as being a very good researcher and a really good student possibly too of life so those are all of your charms and all of your cards here i hope you enjoyed this reading here with me today and you got to enjoy and celebrate yourself find pride in yourself or reclaim some of these things right sometimes they get lost along the way because people haven't reminded us of our power and who we really can be if we allow ourselves to step back into those spaces. So I hope that you found a little bit of empowerment here, a little bit of love for yourself, some pride in yourself, and really just feel, you know, good and cozy in who you are. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, definitely be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below how this resonated for you. Uh, if you did enjoy this reading and you'd like to check out the other readings that I do, then definitely feel free and consider subscribing to this Kindred Space and Kindred community. It is also one I fiercely protect and love, so we definitely have that in common. And yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me here today on my birthday. Um, I really do appreciate it. I know it's not exactly my birthday when this gets posted, but I still appreciate it nonetheless. And if you would like to support this space even further, then definitely feel free to check out the Kindred Tip Jar down below. It's a great way for me to provide more space to get new decks and new supplies, new cameras and new equipment to be able to bring better quality videos and readings here to you. Uh, but if you'd like to support yourself as well as support this space, then definitely feel free to check out the uh, snail mail readings down below. They are typewritten on a vintage typewriter, they're wax sealed clothes, they're very treasured, very very personal and respectful and empowering readings for you to receive in the mail, in person, and really enjoy in this digital world. And I hope that you check those out down below. So with all of that said, thank you so much again for joining me here on my birthday and being able to celebrate yourself. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! Hello group two, if you've decided to choose this piece of tiger's eye in the heart, then this is the pile for you as we are going to be looking into these beautiful celebratory and pride kind of messages. These are going to be such like pep talk kind of messages as I mentioned earlier in the intro um, and as it is my birthday and I am so excited to celebrate myself, I really wanted to celebrate you guys as well and bring you into this. So without repeating myself, let's go ahead and get started by looking into the charms. We're also going to be using the watercolor affirmations as well as two different oracle decks and everything else will be listed in the description down below. And the tarot deck of choice today is the Modern Witch Tarot. Very bold and beautiful to look into the beautiful traits in yourself that you can be reclaiming at this time, right? So you might be looking at these cards and thinking maybe these aren't you or this used to be you. This is a place to pep you back up, to remind yourself of your worth, how empowered 
empowering you can be and how empowering you are and yeah so just be gentle with yourself enjoy this reading really allow yourself to have this pep talk allow yourself to enjoy these compliments and let's get started so if you are settled definitely feel free to send your energy in and here we go so group two what are we celebrating about you today what are these big traits that maybe you forgot about or you just needed reminding of a bit of a pep talk a bit of a um just from uh, kind of like just fully celebrating and being in that space of pride so first off we have justice showing up here as well as the tower such an interesting combination right we see the tower in terms of like divinatory methods as being quite a big change but I also see this in line with justice as being like almost like you're an advocate for others you are um you know, you're really good in chaos. I also see that as well. Like you're really good at taking things in in a chaotic environment and really just making really nice, good, clean decisions. You're could be a very good leader, I would say. Um, let's see what else you have coming in here. Let's get your final trait um, as well as looking at the other ones later on. But let's see. You've definitely intrigued me, group two. So let's see, group two. Okay, so you also have the eight of wands. For sure, you are good in a quick, fast-paced environment. I personally would look up to you in this because I am not good in a quick, fast-paced environment. But here we have with the eight of wands, it seems that you really can be such a go-getter. You really, um, and a go-getter, not like, not in like an Aries kind of way, in like a sort of adaptive and resilient kind of way like I see you being a very resilient person you're really good at being more flexible bending to the changes that constantly maybe come up in your life you're really good in high stress situations um, maybe because you've had to constantly move your entire life or maybe because you've been in situations that have just been possibly more high stress um or you're just, you might just be, even if you haven't been subjected to them, you could be really good in them. Um, I also see this in even highly emotional experiences too. You can be that voice of reason. So some people might see you as being maybe a bit cold. You might be more um, of an earth sign of some sort or more in a fixed sign. But I definitely see this with justice as being very like a good communicator. You really say what needs to be said. That's why I think you'd be a really good unbiased leader, um, even like in politics. But beyond that, you could just be like, you know, impartial to a situation. You're really objective to a situation. Um, or even if you are subjective, if you have a subjective point of view in a situation because, you know, you have a lot of experience in it, like with advocacy, like advocating for others or advocating for yourself in some way in a more political way or even just in a more small community way I do see you being a really good leader because you even if it is subjective you put your whole story your whole heart into it I see you having a lot of heart. I see you having a lot of bravery as well. Uh, the tower, right? I, like I said, you're really good at subject to change. You're really good to quickly move from one place to the next. And that may be because of the places you've been subjected to and the, and the um, types of relationships in your life. So sometimes, right, some people might see this as you being cold. But I also see this as a way of protecting yourself. And I see this as being very clever. You're very quick-witted. Um, you're the first to make like a quick joke or to move lightly through a situation. Because the... Um, the Justice card also has a lot to do with Libra, and I also see this as being poor, um, quite closely related to the air element, which is why I got that good communicator kind of message, but I also see this as being sort of like the wind, right? It's constantly being able to flow and move around something. It's really, really hard to hit the wind. Like if they were taking this sword and trying to, if someone wanted to take a sword and really try to knock you down, it would be so hard because you are like made of the wind like how do you fight back the wind right so I see that in you a lot this feeling of flexibility resilience um right resilience being like a stretch of a of a rubber band and you just come back like you just are easily it may not be easy right I'm saying this as if it's easy to you and it may not be easy but at least from the outside a lot of people can see that and they depend on that or they really notice that in you and think that that's really awesome that you're able to be so resilient um like I said 
because of this, you may have had to go through some difficult situations. So this isn't to say to always put a wall up or, you know, sometimes we put on a happy face or we put on this idea of being this wind, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. So definitely still seek out help if you need to or ask for help if you need to. But that does sometimes come in forms of resilience, right? Sometimes that rubber band snapping back into place is because we asked for help or because we are able to see beyond the the surface level of the situation. So that's what I'm getting so far from your cards. Like I said, leadership, resilience, feeling like you are able to quickly move and shift and change very quickly in a situation, being objective and impartial. But let's go ahead and look further. So I want to look into what I call the superpower card, right? This is like your superpower trait, your superpower in life. Um, and right, we always think of flying, super strength, um, being able to... I don't know, read minds or something like that being invisible, but this is something that is physically already in you. This is something that you can really empower yourself with and a lot of people really um, admire about you. So let's go ahead and look into this trait to truly celebrate. So group, there we go. I'm not sure if it was this one, honestly, but I'm going to go ahead and just take the one that flew out because it's calling a little bit deeper. Okay, so yeah, we've got Luna Moth Radiate. How am I the light in the darkness? So we literally are seeing that with the tower. And usually when we see the tower, we see the strike of the tower as being destructive, right? But sometimes it can be that impartial view, right? Sometimes there are things in our lives that we need that just need to be said, right? We have to be the person to break things down. We can't always be people pleasers. So I see this as you not people pleasing, right? It's not that you're trying to be harsh or brash or anything like that. It's not coming from a, a really rude or um, ungrateful or just trying to stir the pot kind of place. Like, it doesn't feel that kind of negative. It feels very, um, like, you just want to be honest. Like, I see you being a very honest person. Um, like, if someone asks, do I look good in this dress, you're going to be honest with them. It doesn't mean you're going to be mean, but you're going to be honest. And I see that with Radiate as well. And I think that's why people see you as a light in the darkness, because you do radiate this honesty. You radiate this feeling of trust because of that. And the reason why I say that is because I did sneak a little peek at the card that did show up for you that also popped out. And I'll just go ahead and pull it out at this point. Um, and it is trust and it says am I honoring my knowing and it is the white-tailed deer so this is where it kind of overlays here this feeling of trust this feeling of knowing this feeling of just being really good at also judging people right off the bat like not in like a rude way but just in like a from a surface level, from an intu intuition level, you can immediately tell if people are good for your friend, not good for your friend, good for you, um, not good for you. If you get this creepy feeling or an untrustworthy feeling, you just can really get those quick hit gut feelings, right? You have really quick intuitive hits. Um, but yeah, you're a light in the darkness for a lot of people. A lot of people look up to you, right? We look up to the moon for inspiration. They're looking up to you for inspiration for um, that place to shelter themselves, which I can definitely see where that comes from. But I think, like I said, the one thing I wanted to say is because you are a light in the darkness, because you are a person who people come to a lot, I think it's important to also make sure to, to let yourself take down some of these these walls that you have to protect others and give yourself that space to also honor yourself and trust in yourself and remind yourself that other people you can trust in um, to help you along the way to also be your light, right? Because um, it can be very lonely being the only light in the darkness. So it's important to seek out and trust in others as well. So with that said, I want to now look into a lesson or a new situation that may be coming up for you within the next few months or so to then look at the trait that you may be gaining from that, right? Something you're reclaiming, an old trait that you had and you kind of forgot about or you, you lost along the way, or a trait that's new to you, some new sort of wisdom that may be coming in. So let's go ahead and do that with the Seed and Sickle Oracle. So definitely feel free to send your energy in and we're going to look first for the situation or lesson that you'll be moving through. So group, 
two here. What lesson or situation are you growing through over these next few months? Okay, so we have Daisy. And then I'm also going to take the other one that flipped up on the top because that seems to be a theme for you with these two cards and this one. They just seem to be resonating together. And you have the mushroom for your other card here, which also has moons involved. Very interesting. Um, we have both sort of a sun or moon here. Lots of moons, lots of darkness. That light in the darkness definitely makes sense. You may be a night owl as well. Um, but what I wanted to say here is we have the number 25 and 31, as well as the summer suit and the fall suit. So you may be learning this lesson over the summer, and it will be gaining that wisdom when you hit the fall. Definitely depends on where you're living, definitely depends on your perspective, but that may be coming through for a few of you. So with the daisy card, so this is... When I see daisies, personally, like, beyond the de definition of this, I see innocence, and I see, like, that playful feelings. You may see that in some way, like, an inner child kind of reconnection or rekindling, but I also see this with daisy. It typically talks about within this deck an idea of rebirth, an idea of pushing kind of through things to get to the next, to get to the next sort of phase in something. Um, so I see this as, like, constant rebirths right if you ever think about like our lives we go from being a young kid to a teenager and that's sort of our own personal rebirth a kind of personal not actual death but like you know a death to rebirth cycle a move through something where something ended maybe it was bittersweet and then we move to the next thing so you're currently possibly ending some sort of cycle in your life and having that rebirth in the end that sunset to sunrise feeling and that's why you might have that innocence coming in that playfulness coming in that rechange and recharge of your energy as well because um like I said you're that light in the darkness so I see that as that sunset and then you're getting this sun rise. So I really do see in this card this feeling of like possibly moving from one job to the next or moving from one um, like version of yourself to the next, this big transformation. Uh, the tower has a lot to do with transformation as well and change and there's a lot of big change coming in for you. And I think that, like I said, you're very capable with change. You're really good and quick to move through change. So I don't see that scene see that as being um the obstacle but I do see the obstacles being that like letting your guard down like I talked about earlier because the trait that you're gonna be kind of gaining through all of this is the mushroom so with this we had that that radiate that full moon over here we have that full moon you are that light in the darkness always full always ready always got things going which is something to celebrate. You're always fiercely protecting, like I said, with group one, especially if you watched both. You are also, like group one, a fierce protector, a very objective point of view. And with that, like the, like the moon, um, we are, you're only seeing it as one version of that moon. But here you have all these different versions of the moon showing up here, all these different phases. And I think sometimes people put you, kind of pigeonhole you into a corner or you maybe pigeonhole yourself into a corner that you always have to be full, always have to have a smile on, always have to be protecting, always have to be your highest and best self. And sometimes I think that this rebirth is going to be showcasing to you the flaws in yourself or reminding yourself that it's okay to have flaws, to have different phases of yourself, that you're going through different phases and that's okay to be a complete novice in it, not to have all the facts, not always to be ready to be the first one to say the best thing. Um, you know, like people who have quick wit or really good, quick decision making, when they come across a really, really hard obstacle that can be feel, feel very um, disheartening and very difficult to move through because they haven't had to go through that too much. You almost have like this plateau feeling. So with that, I think it's important, especially because the the mushroom can talk about a full fungal network there to help you, but you have to reach out first. You have to let people know that you possibly need help, that you need them to be your light in the darkness because your phase isn't full right now. Your cup isn't full right now. You don't have enough spoons for it. You don't have enough time for it, or you're currently just don't have the answers and that's okay like it's okay to not always have things figured out and it's okay to celebrate that that 
that you're asking for help, you know? So I see this as being a really beautiful thing for you to be moving and navigating through, especially with the rest of your cards. So those are the lessons and new traits you may be learning and growing through over these next few months. But I want to pull you an affirmation to finish off the cards. But like I said, we are going to do charm messages and we're going to do it in a very similar way as last week. So if you watch that one, this will be quite fun. Um, but first off, if you would like to before I pull this, definitely feel free and consider giving this video a like. It really does help the channel so much. Um, but I want to go ahead and pull this for you. So let's look at this affirmation. Okay, so we got two of them, and they both fell on mushroom over here, which I think is interesting. You've got that dark brown kind of nature coming in here with laughter is the best medicine. And then we also have two sides to every story, which definitely showcases that that feeling of like putting laughter on, trying to be the first one to say the witty comment, trying to almost use laughter or comedy as a way to move through things, which isn't a bad thing for healing, right? Laughter and comedy, but sometimes we can use it as that smile we put on. And there's two sides, there's more phases to the story, and I think that it's opening yourself up and allowing other people in to that vulnerable side of yourself that's going to be so useful to you. With all of your cards here said, let's go ahead and move on to your charms. So we're going to use this little uh, space here to cast your charms into, and we're going to look at specific messages coming in for different traits that we maybe haven't um, looked at or more to celebrate about yourself to finish off the reading here. So definitely feel free to send your energy in as always, and we're going to go ahead and pull some traits out for you. So here we go, group two. Okay, lots of little traits. Um, not that they're little, but like little charms rather. So I'm going to zoom you in so you can see here. But these are the traits that I'm seeing. We have the flip-flop, which is about flexibility, that resilience, right? A flip-flop constantly is able to move back and forth to come back and snap back into themselves. So I do see that resilience coming through, that strength and flexibility. Um, I also see the tied-up charm, though. So I do see this as being, sometimes you're feeling a little tied up um, and that, like, a Again, like I said, maybe you need a little bit of help and someone else to be your guiding light because we do have, again, more of that guiding light. A lot of people see you as a guiding light in their life. You give really good advice. You give really good um, objective advice and decision-making skills and leadership skills that come through with that because this I always see is like a guiding light, a compass, a lighthouse in some way. I also see here as you being a very clear communicator in that you also get a lot of things done really not that they are e they come easy to you, but you're really good at task lists or keeping things um, nice and orderly. I also see this as spiritual guidance as well. Um, this usually talks about, um, like, someone beyond, so a spirit guide, a ancestor, a loved one, um, the universe in some way. However you see it, I do see them working in your favor to help you through this mushroom sort of trait and daisy here. I also see, again, that you're really good at being very busy, keeping busy. Um, you might be the type of person that's constantly able to work on your to-do list. You have a lot of ideas in your mind, and you really like to stick to them and move through them. This also talks about an abundance of ideas that constantly flow through you. It looks like berries. Um, I also see that as being very golden for you. Uh, the other things that we have here is the cheetah charm. So again, very fast. You're very quick. You make very quick decisions. You're, you might be slightly impulsive um, but you also sometimes like we always see of impulsive as being kind of brash or fast but I also see it as being like you know following your impulse following your intuition following what feels right to you in the moment so I also see that here and then we also have the magic charm so I see this as the magician because this is like Mickey's hat so this can be that you're a very imaginative person maybe a very creative person I also see this as being more spiritually inclined or 
um, interested in magic or witchcraft in some way, possibly, or even just very in tune with um, nature and natural laws and physics and things like that, maybe even a science sort of kind of way here. But those are all of your charms here and all of your cards. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, just being able to celebrate you, remind you of your worth, remind you of the guiding light that you truly are, and that you're also allowed to, you know, break down. You're allowed to have other people lift you up and carry you as well and allowed to trust in them. So definitely celebrate that. Celebrate that that is actually a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, like I mentioned earlier, please be sure to give this video a like. It really does help the channel so much. And if you'd like to, definitely feel free and consider subscribing to this space to see the different Monday readings that I put out for love, spirituality, self-growth, and empowerment, and so, so much more. There's already over 100 videos that you can check out if you'd like to. And if you would also also like to support this channel even further then definitely feel free to check out the kindred chip tip jar down below it's a great way to help support this space to uplift the different decks and supplies that we get here and helps to financially support it but if you would also like to check out different ways to not only support this channel but also yourself then that would be a great place to check out the um, different snail mail readings that I do so you can get a private reading that is sent to you in the mail it's typewritten on a vintage typewriter wax sealed closed and also they're very treasured there's lots of wonderful reviews on my Instagram that you can check out down below all about them and so yeah if you'd like to support this space you can check out all of that down below thank you so much for just just kind of chatting with me hanging out here having this beautiful little pep talk and um hanging out here on my birthday thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one bye Hello group three, if you've decided to choose this beautiful rose quartz heart, then this is the pile for you. Today, as I mentioned in the intro, it is my birthday, so I really wanted to celebrate, you know, not only myself, but also the beautiful traits in all of you, my beautiful kindred spirits, because there are such beautiful traits already within the last two piles that I've got to see in all of you, and I want to look even deeper with you guys. So we're going to be using the charms, the watercolor affirmations, as well as several different oracle decks, which I'll have all of this listed down below in the description. And today's tarot deck of choice is the Modern Witch Tarot. Very bold and just really giving the, the best for these reading so far so I'm really loving it so if you are ready if you're ready to get a bit of a pep talk to reclaim these traits to remind yourself of the traits that are so beautiful and other people see in you as being such positive wonderful things in your life then definitely feel free to get settled and ready to go with a nice um beverage of your choice or some food or something else to do and we're gonna get started so feel free to send your energy in as always and we're gonna look into the things the traits to celebrate about you today so what about you goodness we're getting two already right off the bat we've got the sun and the ace of cups so that's already really beautiful cards to be getting i mean some of my favorites we have the sun here like i mentioned as well as the ace of cups but let's look even further let's get your third trait and i'll start talking on these they're already flying out um such innocence and beauty in your pile already so let's go ahead and look further all right that was too many let's just keep going here group three Group three, we're looking for one more trait here to celebrate, although you have many more, I'm sure. For group <laughs> cute group three, so we have the Knight of Cups showing up here as well. So we've got both the Sun and the Ace of Cups, as well as the Knight of Cups. So two cup cards, a lot of emotional energy, a lot of feeling like life really moves you and you feel like whatever you put into life really comes from a an emotional space. Like you're the type of person I feel like where you show not just your heart on your sleeve, but literally on your face. Like, you know, when I'm personally one of these types of people where like I show all my emotions right off my face. I have a horrible poker face. I feel like you're probably like that too, where 
you just can't keep when you have joy you have joy when you're feeling something you're feeling it wholeheartedly and not in a dramatic way or an over like an intention seeking way but in a just like you are very vulnerable you're very raw you're very honest about your emotional side of yourself and maybe it's not always the most emotionally mature because we do have it as the knight of cups um but it is very emotionally driven which means there's such innocence to this pile as well. So, okay, with the sun, the sun showcases that not only are you much like group two, a light in people's life, like you just really light people up with like so much joy and laughter and innocence, right? We have this small child on this card riding a horse with this whole sort of beautiful, wholesome energy. And then there's the sunflowers as well that show showcases this um beautiful energy of radiance like I just feel like your joy your love your care when you put it on your sleeve when you put it on your face people see it and it's like infectious right like it makes me feel giggly right now like I feel like I could giggle I could get all smiley and um just such it's just like all of your emotions are such pure emotions right they just come from a very pure unclouded space and I think a lot of people find a lot of um rawness in that in a really good vulnerable way so they feel like they can be vulnerable with you too they feel like they can be young and innocent where they just can pour their whole heart out to you which maybe means that you get like maybe um confessions of love or you get like uh just a lot of people giving you all their emotional baggage because they have that safe space with you which maybe you found that like a lot of people are very vulnerable with you back but I do think that that you know, even though it comes with those challenges, I think that, that it gives you much more true connections, especially in friendships. I think that you're a very good friend, a very loyal friend, a very honest and comforting friend. With the Ace of Cups, like I said, there is the idea of my cup runneth over, right? Your emotions, no matter what they are, right? Rage, um, sadness, mad grief, uh, frustration, whatever it may be, or even the more happy ones like happiness joy bittersweetness whatever it may be you really just carry that with you and not in a a way in which you feel like you have to always um protect your heart although you know some people may feel that you maybe should protect your heart more often and you know sometimes in situations maybe you should but I do see that being more of a good trait than a bad one in this case so it's something to definitely celebrate in yourself that you are very connected to your emotions connected to your emotional landscape you may be a um water sign in your sun moon or rising sign or just in general I feel like a lot of people um or at least in your chart you may have like a lot of water in your chart um or a lot of mutable signs the other thing that I want to talk about too with the knight of cups is it usually is sort of the and I even said this in group two they're definitely overlaying here so definitely feel free to check out group two if you'd like as well but um there is this feeling of like uh, a hopeful romantic is the way that I've reclaimed it, right? We always see it as hopeless romantics, but right, sometimes we're hopeful romantics or we're just the type of people and you may find yourself to be this type of person that really just sees the world from a very, like you put your toes in the grass. You really take every sense of the emotion that you're feeling into everything that you do. So I see you being as maybe a more artistic person. I see you as being a more creative person for sure and maybe slightly more thematic or dramatic person in that um you just really put it all out there um other people may be like uh I don't know if I feel comfy doing that but you're like I'm just gonna do it because this was what makes my soul happy right so follow those hopeful romantic feelings you may be really interested in love or romance or things like that um or even in like I said more pl- pl- Uh, platonic ways I can't speak today more platonic ways you may be feeling a lot of emotion towards your your friends and your family and your close-knit community which has come up in all three piles as well the idea of community so I've talked a lot on your cards already I feel like I could talk for ages but I want to keep going so let's go ahead and look at what I call your superpower trait right so this is a trait that is 
like other people see it as like something you can really wield as your superpower, right? We already have the heart on your sleeve. We have the joy, the comfort. I also forgot to mention you might be a very funny, uplifting type of person. People maybe see you as being very magnetic and charismatic. Um, but let's see what else you have coming in. This is your superpower. So let's see your superpower trait here, group two. All right, so let's take this one here and see what you got. So it looks like we've got here, of course, you've got the Coyote Play. This is such a joyful card. I always see this as connecting with my inner child. So I definitely th see you as being more connected with your inner child. So maybe it's even your inner teenager. I'm getting like an idea of your inner teenager because of the night. Um, but yeah, we have the Coyote. We have Play here. And it's what energizes me. And seeing as you have that next to the sun being your central card here, I think that... Your emotions really energize everything that you do. You follow your emotions in possibly a more impulsive way, but I do see that as being a really good trait for you. I also see you, like I said, being really connected to your inner child. So some people may see it silly that you maybe play with chalk or play old games that you used to play as a kid or a teenager. Listen to the, to the music you used to listen to as a teenager. Maybe, like I said, that hopeful romantic vibe. Maybe you were really obsessed with a band or something like that. I could see you being very obsessive with things in a um, maybe even like ADHD way. Um, definitely take that only if it resonates. Obviously, um, I am not a health professional, but right there is this feeling of like hyperactive playfulness and just joy and like this like you can roll around in laughter or roll down a hill or sled down a hill or just go out and build a snowman like I just feel like this like pure joy like you want to draw in coloring books or get creative in that joyful young kind of spirited way and I think a lot of people find that young nature in you as something to celebrate for sure so let's go ahead and see a little bit further so um the other thing I wanted to say about this too is in our society these days right we always sort of look at people with this young personalities as needing to grow up right you need to grow up and grow up but I think you bring a lot of that healing towards a lot of people who felt like they had to grow up fast or that they weren't able to reconnect with their inner child in some way or maybe you've even been reclaiming this playfulness and that's maybe why this is coming up as well and you really bring a lot of um, light to people in that joyous way. So let's go ahead and look a little further. So with the seed and sickle deck here, we are going to be looking into a situation or lesson that you're going to be learning over these next couple of months or going through over these next couple of months and a trait that you may be celebrating or being proud of yourself for coming through this situation. So it's something that you'll be gaining from all of this. So let's look into this. So group so we've got the first one already with Elder. This is in the number 34 for the fall suit here. But there you are with Elder. Um, definitely has a creativity element to it. Whenever I see this, it reminds me of creativity or like what, like handmade items in some way. But let's look a little bit further. There also is a lot of wisdom in Elder, right? Um, but let's look a little bit further here. So what else did you get? We also have Rowan, very creative energy. Rowan is for sure a creative element. Um, so there is creativity that's going to be gained from this, maybe new projects that you're going to be gaining um, or new inspiration. But we have the number 21 with the summer suits. You're going, you're kind of going backwards, which makes me again, makes me again feel like you are moving backwards through time, regaining those teenage years, regaining those young adult years, regaining those young, um, naive playfulness years in that creative space. So I see a lot of reclaim energy versus like these were possibly innate in you, although it may have been, but yeah, we have elder, which right, like is an idea of feeling like maybe you had to be the elder. You had to be the wise one growing up. Maybe you had to be the older sibling or the person that always had to look after everyone else because of this joyous na nature, right? People put a lot of their problems on you. Um, and they thought that you could just take it all on, you know, hold it all for everyone, hold space for everyone without being able to hold space for yourself. The other thing with Elder too is it also usually talks about this idea of being a personal doorway as well for transformation, right? So because you've gone through this, it also is a doorway for you to see things from a new perspective, to gain wisdom. So I, 
I think over the next few months, you're possibly going to be gaining wisdom through possible adversity that you may be facing because Rowan has a lot to do with adversity, um, gaining a lot through the idea of adversity. But I also see this as really moving through personal doorways and personal transformations that are going to be really hard to explain here. I don't think that it's going to be something that I'm going to be able to personally explain until it happens. But when it does, I think you're going to have a decision to stick with this sort of feeling of being an elder, having to stick in society, do what everyone else does, or open a personal doorway to something new and creative and different. Because the Rowan is like that feeling of facing adversity and coming out the other side better than you were before or being able to really gain a lot from it or just stick up for yourself. I see this as really sticking up for yourself as well because if you ever think of Rowans, they always tend to be the type of like... um a type of tree that will grow like over the top of a river or over the top of something um, because they or you, they're going to push themselves to the edge of the cliff right next to the river because they're going to get the best sun the best water even though it's going to be the hardest place and the harshest place to possibly grow it's going to be worth the risk so there is that impulsive feeling there is that feeling of also um, placing yourself maybe in a hard place to be, right, with that emotional vulnerability. It's not always easy to be vulnerable, but you gain so much from it. So I think continuing to be vulnerable, walking through that doorway, you're going to gain so much wisdom, so much um, creativity, and possibly new projects that come through from this as well, um, like creative projects and creativity, that you're finally going to be able to thread those pieces together. So that is what I have so far for your cards. Let's go ahead and pull you a watercolor affirmation and then we're going to go ahead and move on to the charms and cast them very similarly to last week. Uh, so you can see what I did last week um, here, but we're going to look into those very specific traits that maybe we didn't cast on already. Uh, but if you are enjoying this reading so far, definitely be sure to give this video a like. It really does help the channel so much, and I appreciate it so, so much, so thank you. But let's go ahead and look at this affirmation for you. And if you'd like to learn how to make these as well, definitely feel free to check out the video up here somewhere um, where I talk about the art magic that I put into this, a little bit of witchcraft and fun creativity, especially with all the creative elements in your pile. But let's see. Okay, you've got a lot here, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up this one here because this is the one that's calling to me most. Okay, so we have go your own way, right? The Rowan is all about going your own way doing things different than maybe everyone else is. They're like staying in the forest, trying to stay safe, trying to stay in their lane. And you're like, I'm going to just do me. I'm just going to do what I need to do to make me happy. So I see you going your own way, following your own impulse and following what, you know, is what feels right to you, following your cup, um, what fills your cup. So I definitely see that. We also have that lime green coming in as well. So I really like that as well for the energetic feeling, that energized feeling. You might be a person that has a lot of energy. You're like a person people would call a ball of energy. But let's go ahead and pull you some charms. So if you want to look at the cards, definitely feel free to pause. But I'm going to go ahead and set this down here so you can see the different charms that we're going to cast. So feel free to send your energy in. And we're going to look into these specific traits for you, group three. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to zoom you in so you can see everything here. Okay, so we've got quite a few showing up here. The first thing that I thought was really interesting right off the bat is that instead of a water sign like I had originally inspected or inspected, had originally um, kind of introspected on or reflected on rather, can't use my words today. They've been all fumbly, but Interesting enough, we're actually looking at the clear communication and intelligence that you have coming in with Gemini. So you may be a Gemini or maybe you actually have more of those um, 
air signs in your chart as well, which is maybe why you're really good at communicating that vulnerability um, in that mix of water and air together, you get that feeling. So we have emotional intelligence coming in here with the Gemini charm. Uh, we also have the letter Q. So you may question things a lot, question society, question, you know, why the sky's blue, that kind of young feeling as well. Uh, I also see the number five here. So again, being um, able to really quickly change through adversity and really able to um, face adversity in a really lighthearted and um, emotionally capable way, especially since we have the overwhelmed charm. So again, I see you as being a person that can really move through that overwhelm really well, or you have a really good way of moving through these coping mechanisms um, using your intuition as well, because we have the intuition charm. You may be really connected to your intuition, especially with that air element. Um, we also have the flip-flop showing up. This also showed up in another pile. This showcases flexibility and resilience, being able to um, also make a really quick decision on a dime, right? Flipping, flopping, flipping, flopping from one thing to the next. You may be a daydreamer as well. I'm getting a lot of daydream energy too, like this feeling of like feeling very dreamy and head in the clouds, possibly because of that air element coming through. There is a lot of mindfulness as well. People might find you as a very mindful person, a very like in tune with all of your five senses. You really take things in fully. So when you eat something or you put your toes in the grass or you um, have a bath or you're in some sort of relaxing landscape, I see you as being a very present person and you find a lot of gratitude in the present moment um, and really take all of that in. Uh, the other thing, too, is this can just showcase that you're really a gift in a lot of people's lives. So I really love that showing up. That's so, so sweet. We have the, um, this is the charm of feeling sort of like, I always see this as sort of like a black hole, but finding structure in it, right? So we, you're kind of maybe more scientific, um, or you look at things from a scientifically creative way. Like I said, you're possibly a very intelligent person. And then we also have the letter A showing up here. So Q&A. So maybe you like people to ask you questions um, as well as question the universe and the world. The other thing that we have here is the spring. So this can talk about springing forward. Maybe you're a spring baby like me or you just are really good at springing to the next thing. I'm almost getting like, if you've ever watched Winnie the Pooh, like you're Tigger. You're the type of person that's constantly like moving and grooving and to the next thing and jumping to the next thing. Like you're a ball of energy for sure. Um, the other thing we have here, you may be a teacher or a mentor because we have the uh, like sort of um, like, you know, you give an apple to a teacher. I don't know where that came from, but that's what I think of when I see this apple. Possibly a healthier eater or you just really enjoy apples. Take it literally as, as literally as you'd like. We have the cage charm. So I do see that you really like your comfort though. You really like to be comfortable. Um, and then the other thing that we have here is the transformation charm with the, um, butterfly here so I see this butterfly is not only transforming once but being able to constantly evolve like a tr like a Pokemon right so you're not just staying as the base level version of yourself you're constantly allowing yourself to evolve to change and to move through things so I definitely see a blend of pile number one and two in this pile so if you didn't feel fully resonating with all of these charms or cards then I definitely would recommend checking out pile one or two because you just might be a Pokemon, a very unique person that has a little bit of all of these coming up here. But uh, yeah, these are all of your charms and your cards. Definitely feel free to look at them and see them in new and unique ways that maybe I didn't um, immediately see. But definitely celebrate these traits because they are parts of you or ones you can reclaim about yourself um, that are really brilliant and beautiful and should be celebrated. And I am definitely celebrating them with you. Uh, thank you so much for joining me here on my birthday. I appreciate it so much. If you enjoyed this reading, definitely feel free to give this video a like. I appreciate it so, so much. And also let me know in the comments down below how this resonated for you. This is always such a fun one. I love pepping you guys up. It's like some of my favorite things to do on this channel. But if you haven't already, definitely feel free and consider subscribing to this kindred space. Um, there's such a beautiful community here that is so unique and rich and I love I love meeting and connecting with all of you through these, so definitely feel free to subscribe, and if you haven't already and you would like to 
check out the different private readings that I do or even check out the kindred tip jar that I have down below. It's a great way to support this space through the different snail mail readings that I do that are sent to you in the mail, typewritten on a vintage typewriter and wax sealed closed for your eyes only. They're very treasured readings. I have lots of reviews down below on my Instagram and all of the information down below if that's something that you're interested in. Like I said, it's a great way to support this channel through both of those different options and I appreciate it so much if you'd like to check them out for not only supporting this space but also supporting yourself. So before I ramble on anymore, thank you again for joining me here, celebrating yourself and celebrating this space here on my birthday. I appreciate you all so, so much more than you really do know and I will see you in the next one. Bye!